All right. Okay. Um, cool. So to everyone, you know, on the, on the call, like they, like they mentioned, um, you know, presentation exchange Ooh. is really uh, geared at trying to normalize um, the exchange of credentials over any of what I guess I would call um, envelopes formats, you know, envelope protocols, things like OpenID Connect or DidComs and all that sort of stuff, right? And the reason we set out to do this work is because, you know, especially, you know, at the time and even now, I think there's even potentially other candidates coming through uh, for those options where there wasn't a clear, um, you know, a clear answer where everyone was just using, say, OpenID Connect or everyone was just using DidComs. And, um, and now we've got, you know, something like four or five of these different envelope conduits. Um, and we thought, hey, you know what, the, the, the bulk of the logic and the bulk of the, the actual um, details and, and complexity is really not in the envelope. It's, it's in the, the way you evaluate, right? As, as a verifier, what you want to articulate to the holder of credentials for what you need. And then for the holder to evaluate on their side, given some set of criteria, um, what they have in relation to those uh, requests from the verifier. So the guts of that logic is really what presentation exchange is about. And it endeavors to be completely agnostic of whatever you might happen to wrap it in. So if you were to wrap it in, you know, um, for instance, OpenID Connect, great. If you can wrap it in DidComs, fantastic. Um, those would be mostly, those wrappers mostly at this point will handle things like, um, you know, nonces and, and replay protection, those sorts of sorts of things, right? Um, whereas presentation exchange handles all the goings on inside of it um, that lets you represent your credentials. So if you are a verifier and you are going to ask a holder for something, um, there's two objects defined in the spec. One is called presentation definition and the other is called presentation submission. And we'll talk about the presentation definition first because that's what a verifier is going to send to someone who they wanna maybe get some information from. So what you're looking at here uh, on your screen is a, is a presentation definition. Now it's, it's an object, uh, it's a data model and it's an object that, that embeds in any of those envelope formats. So you could find this presentation definition object inside of you know, a verifiable uh, presentation. You could find it inside of a DIDCOM you know, wrapper. It could be inside of Chappy. It could go inside of OIDC. It, it essentially, I mean, I, I jokingly refer to presentation exchange kind of like the Borg, right? It, it, it just kind of uh, teleports onto your ship, the ship being the envelope format and sort of just assimilates everything. It just says, great, you did your job. You got me from point A to point B. Uh, I'll take over from here. And that way your logic stays completely the same. No matter what you're doing across, you know, using any of those formats, like your logic to evaluate these things doesn't have to change one single line of code. And that's that's the, the, the benefit here is 80% code reuse across all the transports. So if you look in this object, this is a definition object that's going to come to you via one of those um, noted envelopes, and it's going to have some important bits to it. So you can see here there's this input descriptors array. And what that input descriptors array is, is, is basically the list of things the verifier wants you to produce. So this is an example input descriptor. Um, let's, you know, it has an ID that, you know, the, the uh, verifier makes up, doesn't matter what it is. Um, they give it a name and the purpose. They might say, you know, why they're asking for this thing. Um, and then they might group it together because there is the, the idea of selection. So we'll talk about the selection capabilities in a second, but this is basically just saying, hey, I'm, I'm an input that you could submit in, in this group A. There could be many uh, inputs in group A. And if you want to submit against me a credential that will work for this has to be maybe one of these URIs, right? This is giving you a hint that it's gonna be, you know, credential produced under the banking schema, you know, 2.0 schema or 1.0 in this case, accepting either one um, is what this is communicating to you. So the first thing the holder is gonna do is look through their wallet and say, well, do I have any, you know, banking schema.org 1.0 style credentials or, or 2.0? And, and if they do have one of those account credentials, they're gonna say, great, that checks off the first thing. At least we're speaking about the same credential that I actually have. 
And then the second thing they might do is they might start inspecting the fields because the verifier could say, hey, you know, these fields need to match up with these values or be in these ranges, whatever they set, right? And if you look down there in the fields, um, there's this path capability, <clears throat> which uses JSON path. So I'll, I'll, I'll jump back in here. So if you look here, um, there's the, there's this, this, fields array. And basically what this is doing is giving you further specificity. It's saying from the verifier's perspective, hey, you, you might not just want to give me a bare account credential, even if you have it, because you know what, I need it to adhere to these additional constraints, right? And some of these constraints could be on the values of the fields. So if you look through, if you look here, you'll see a filter property, right? And that's basically going to say, if you get the path, the, the value from the path specified in the path array, which could be is basically a fall through. So like, let's say I'm using a VC, it's gonna be at dot issuer. That's gonna be the location, the JSON object. If it's at, if it's a VC JWT, uh, JWT VC, it's gonna be at dot VC issuer. If it's just a regular VC or uh, JWT, it might be at dot ISS, right? So what this path array does is when you run the logic of an implementation of presentation exchange over this, it's going to find the right um, value regardless of what's the inbound format that it's wrapped in, right? So, and that's all, you know, Gabe's implementation does that, the one that we've, you know, implemented does that. So you don't have to care so much about like, you know, a, a non-standard way of testing, what do you got, right? So if you run the pathway, it's gonna isolate the first value that wins. Basically, it's gonna find the first one um, and then stop. And once it's found a value, then you take the filter object, which is just a standard JSON schema filter object um, and apply it to the value. And it's gonna say, hey, is it a string? Great. Uh, does it match this pattern in JSON schema? Pattern is like a regex, right? Um, or maybe there's like a, a length restriction, right? As the second one you see there. Get get the account. One of the accounts needs to have a string um, on the ID property that's between 10 and 12 characters, for instance, right? So it gives you this expressive language for being able to diagnose as a holder whether you've got the right thing to fulfill, you know, the verifier's request. Um, so Gabe, do we want to talk maybe a little bit about the selection, uh, capabilities? Yeah, or sure. Uh, one thing I just want to add there is because we've leveraged JSON path and JSON schema, it's been really easy to make implementations uh, to comply with the spec and, and, uh, so you can pretty much build JSON schemas on the fly, according to the, the filters, because our, our language is adopted from the JSON, um, schema spec. And similarly for JSON paths, you can just apply each path to the set of credentials in it. It works with a library that is off the shelf and already well tested. Um, selections. Yeah, the first version we did of this before I before we added a couple of the other bits, it was like 16 lines or something, you know, assuming you bring in packages for those uh, standard things. Um, so yeah, you can you can get it down to, to be pretty tight. Um, yeah, so let, let's talk a little bit about the combinatoric thing, uh, Gabe. Yes. I guess it would be under, uh, under submission requirement objects. Is yeah. that it? Or yeah, up there. So when we when we said that those inputs can have groups, um, what I'll give you now, you know, a lot of imp implementers may not you know use this too often, at least at the start, while credentials are nascent and there's not a lot of them around. Um, but you you can imagine as we get more credentials in the world people might say, hey, you know, I need a combination of credentials, or I need like, you know, I need more than one. Um, so what we allow for is this underneath the, so the uh, presentation definition object is a submission requirements array. And what this requirements array is saying is basically you need to fulfill my requirements, but you can do them in certain combinations. Like what this re submission requirements array is saying is, um, you need to submit uh, some banking information. So pick one, so you can, it's pretty straightforward here. The rule is pick one from A. What that means is you've got to submit to me one qualifying credential from group A of the input descriptors below, right? And then under employment information, um, you would say, you know what, I need all of B. So, so please give me all of the ones tagged with B. And then down below, it might say, you know, I need some citizenship information. So go ahead and pick one from these, these list of choices, right? Um, either C or D. So what it gives you the ability to do um, is to essentially format your, your request um, in a choose your own adventure style, if you have optionality. 
Now, most credentials to start might just be like, give me this one credential, right? But at least we're future-proofing ourselves here in a way that you can really give them any common and torque you want. Yeah, so the language is very flexible and it can be complex because we want it to enable any type of selection use case you encounter. Uh, speaking on behalf of Workday, we've had a system in production for um, almost a year now and we haven't encountered anything like this, this grouping logic, but now we can because it exists. Um, so submission requirements are optional uh, along with a lot of things in, that you see in the spec, but um, you, you can support what you need depending on the complexity of your use case. Um, I wanna answer a question I see in the chat on localization. We did think about this briefly. Uh, we, we have an optional locale property that allows you to denote the the locales you, you specify, and I, I guess it would indicate to the requester and the holder on the, the language or locale of the credentials and submissions. Uh, we don't have much past that yet, and that's something we, we are looking to improve in uh, future versions. Cool. So um, one thing that it does allow for, so let me talk through the formats um, of the definition. <clears throat> I don't know where they are. They're probably... Okay. So the formats you can express um, through this formats property inside of the definition, which allow you as the verifier to say, hey, you know what? I accept these forms of credential. So like you could have the same credential from the same... Um, schema but it could be you know enveloped in an envelope that's that's different than another so one might be a jvt or a v you know link data proof for instance or a vc and so what this allows you to do is to actually express to your to the holders these are the ones i can process um so you know just 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 a note on that um additionally there is a section under which you can um place the alg or uh, proof type um, so under each of these formats, you could also further specify to, to holders, you know, I, I, um, I understand signatures based on ED25519 or like, you know, BLS or, you know, whatever you want, uh, whatever your particular credential is using so that, again, the, ver the holder has the opportunity to understand, do I even hold something that this verifier is going to be able to process so that we can minimize the number of sort of false starts that occur in the industry where someone's like, oh yeah, I, you know, if all we did was give you, you know, let's say schemas, right? Oh, I've got a credential of that schema, but maybe it doesn't have the right fields and values, and maybe it's not of the right format, and maybe it's not signed with keys the uh, implementation can understand. So this helps you understand to not get people in processes that are just going to explode on them in the end, and you know, not get a credential out of the other side or or be allowed, if that makes sense. Um, Gabe, do you want to walk through the the submission stuff? Maybe I can stop talking then. Sure. Uh, so the submission must reference um, the definition. And again, we're completely transport agnostic, so we don't handle anything like um, proofs over the submission or nonces or anything like that. It could be uh, nested in, in anything. But we do have a way to um, show which um, items in the submission you're responding to. And that's what we call a descriptor map. And it, it must be an array of the input descriptors. So if the input descriptors exist, you have to fulfill all of them. Um, and same with the sub submission requirements, you'd have to fulfill all the submission requirements if they exist, but you're referencing the input descriptors that you're fulfilling um, along with an array of the credentials that you're submitting. Um, we do handle nested claims. So this is the case of you have a credential that wraps a credential that wraps another credential if you so choose to design your system like that. Um, and we support a few nice things like selective disclosure and also, um, sorry, let me find the example. Yes, and the format designations that correspond to this mission. So you're able to say, I'm responding to banking input to um, request with a JOT VC, and it's in this position in the index of credentials. And this example is using a verifiable presentation. So you, we have that type, which also has the presentation submission type, and it includes both presentation submission object and the verifiable presentation object. So the VP is now indexable 
uh, by credentials that you're submitting according to the claims. And we are doing selective disclosure here, I believe, by only submitting a certain number of um, subjects that are, that are asked for from the presentation. And here we have the example of multiple different formats of credentials that are responding to the same claim and then signed over by uh, the holder who's being requested here. Yeah, and one thing I, I think to stress is, as you see there, there's all these examples of different formats. And then this is the biggest thing is it trips people up. They'll see like something and think it's only JBTs or another thing and think it's only verifiable presentations. These 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 examples, Chappie, Didcom, you can embed this presentation that submission anywhere. So it's you just take that object and you kind of plop it in whatever you know you're sending it over. And the logic of the implementation doesn't care. It just does its thing. It essentially maps those together and processes correctly. And that was our goal throughout. Yeah, and this chart will show you how to construct your response payload according to the protocol and how you should embed the data. So you'll notice that VP is top level as, as was shown and DigComs might be separate, same with Chappie. Um, one thing I want to call out is that we've been diligent about creating JSON schemas for all our submissions and requests and everything that is defined by the specification. So if you do create your own implementation, you're able to validate uh, the structure of the data that you generate based on the schemas that we have. And we have some pretty good uh, examples and definitions of how to use the syntax we've included. Um, and we've also provided some resources and some common languages for JSON path and JSON schema. Um, I think that's about it so far. Do you have anything to add, Daniel? Um, no, yeah, I mean, that's that's pretty much it right now. We're just trying to close up the 1.0. There's, you know, some, it's mostly formalities and, and editorial language stuff at this point. We're gonna be writing test vectors as we move towards the formal ratification process in diff. Um, I, you know, I know Ori's on the call, so if I say test vectors, I'm gonna get a hand slap at some point. So just wanna make sure I did that. Um, but all that stuff's coming and, uh, and yeah, look forward to it. And please, you know, like work with it, the implementation. It's here to make your life easier. Uh, it's here so you don't have to rewrite this code every time someone comes up with a new like envelope format um, and, and make your hassles uh, go away. Yeah, and just to shamelessly plug our own implementations, both Microsoft and Workday have uh, working implementations against the specification. Uh, I know Aries is, has one too, that, um, and they've opened some issues on the Workday implementation. So I think we'll have some really good support in the community uh, soon. and links to the working no not yet uh we could link them in the spec but i'm cautious of having them officially endorsed um one thing that's in the github is uh some builder met methods that just kind of define the object structure in a common way this one's in go but i know microsoft is going to add one as well um but yeah we could definitely enumerate some working solutions in the readme, that's no problem. Great, I think that's all I, I had. Thanks a lot, guys. And then before we would get to the questions, I would invite uh, Daniel back again and uh, ask him to present Sci3 as well, the Sci3 working group. And then after that, uh, there could be some questions for the presenters. And thanks guys again.